Hello students, hoping that everybody's doing good and welcome once again to Limitless English with Mr. Reyes. So far, today we have what it is the book War Link, Unit A, Lesson A. So Unit 8, Lesson A. So let's get started. The name of the unit is Special Occasions. And yes, in this unit, you're going to be talking about your special occasions or the special occasions that you have information about or that you know. Maybe the ones that you could do in your country or maybe some special occasions that you know about other countries that you would like to be on. The instruction says, look at the photo, answer the questions. Where is this festival and when does it happen? A special occasions happen in different seasons. The seasons are winter, spring, summer, fall. Which season is your favorite? For a lot of people, like summer is like the, their favorite because they could do a lot of things, especially when you are down in New York. Um, a lot of people are out or they come out to New York. Here are some, se some seasons. Which ones happen where you live? Exactly. So maybe you live in a country that is like very warm. Uh, you might only have like one season. You might not like see the winter as it should be. But if you are in, a, in another country that uh, all the seasons are able to be um, as they are supposed to be, like the winter, you know, snowing and summer is very hot, then you might enjoy all the four seasons in that aspect. So what happens? Okay, which one happens where you live? Rainy season, dry season, hurricane season, all right? Oh, typhoon season, mm, whatever it is that you might know about. Unit goals, very important. Talk about important days. Express degrees of certainty. Describe when special occasions happen and how they are celebrated. Very different in different countries. And describe what happens at the fest or at a festival. And if you celebrate a festival in your country, we want to know about it. In the next section, you should watch the video that we have here. On the video, we have something very um, strange and very different. It says, talking about holidays, instruments at the music festival. So listen to the part of the video, the video we have, and then you'll complete the exercises that we have from the video. of islands. Each winter, it plays host to a surreal ice music festival. He made it to look as like my wheelchair, so that's really, it. you know, it's very difficult to make a precision instrument with ice. See, now I'm playing without a glove. Yeah. I could only play for five minutes. Concerts take place in an intimate snow amphitheater where world-class musicians collaborate, providing unexpectedly beautiful music. It's an emotional experience in which the Ice Music Festival mirrors the landscape as the sounds intermingle with pristine falling snow and spaciousness of both the land and soundscape.
challenge by far is building it. Ice with superior sounding qualities is harvested, then transported by utility sled, snowmobile, and Range Rover to the charming ski village of Yilo. So this is uh, going to be used for the marimba. It is meticulously carved and tuned into ethereal sounding instruments for the annual Ice Music Festival. Watching that video, which I find very interesting, then you complete the exercises that we have after the video. Remember, if you don't understand it directly, you can always repeat it and watch it again. And the instructions are, um, watch the video, circle the correct answers. This happens in Norway or in Iceland. Or they make or they play ice instruments. They make or they cut the ice. Remember, um, it could be only one answer, one, or it could be the two. You could circle the two of them if the two are correct. In C says, do you like this music? Tell a partner. So that we're going to do it directly in the class. You're going to tell your partner if you like the music or not, if you like uh, what happens in this video. With a partner, plan a music festival. Write down where it takes place, what instruments there are, and who goes share your ideas with the class so this part you are basically going to do it for homework all right and you need to find out where um is there a festival um especially that you know about and we're going to talk about that festival in the class let's go to the next page the next page we have the vocabulary and this vocabulary so far for the units that we have seen it should be very easy Practice saying the months of the year with a partner. So make sure that you get these things and that you practice. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Repeat it again just in case so you could get that pronunciation. He says here, work with a partner. Name as many holidays as you can. Write each one next to the correct month. In two minutes, try to fill up the chart. So, what holidays do you have in January? Or, and then in February, March that you know about. You could use holidays from your country or holidays that they celebrate in different countries as long as you are practicing with the months. This, this is the Loi Kafon Festival in Thailand. That is a picture of it. In our list, we have Loikathon for November, that is celebrated in November. And that is in Thailand. The idea here is that you can practice the months and the special celebrations that they have. The third part, we got here listening on the third part, practice saying these ordinal numbers with a partner. Then listen and repeat. The idea is that you could get here your pronunciation when you were talking about these numbers okay listen and repeat you already know the numbers in english one two three and so on now we are going to practice saying ordinal numbers first second third and so on they show the order of items in a series listen and repeat First, second, third, 
fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, twentieth, thirtieth, fortieth, fiftieth, one hundredth. Notice that the v sound in numbers like 5 and 12 changes to a f sound. Listen and repeat. 5 5th 12 12th Also pay attention to the TH ending of some ordinal numbers. It's important that you pronounce this TH sound clearly. Let's practice it. Listen and repeat. Four. Fourth. Five. Fifth. Six, sixth, seven, seventh, eight, eighth, nine, ninth. Ten. Tenth. Finally, notice that we add an extra syllable for some ordinals. Listen to each two-syllable word and the three-syllable ordinal number. Repeat. Twenty. Twentieth. Thirty, thirtieth, forty, fortieth, fifty, fiftieth, one hundred, one hundredth. All right, with that pronunciation, make sure that you repeat it again until you are able to memorize how you pronounce those numbers. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, twentieth, thirtieth, fortieth, fiftieth, one hundredth, and so on. The ones that we got. Replay that that part of the audio so like that you can get that pronunciation for you on the b section it says a student is flying home from summer vacation look at the plane ticket below then answer the questions with a partner where is the person going how much is the ticket so looking at this information that we got here um, where is the person going and how much is the ticket All right, it says now, listen for numbers and dates. Listen and complete the information on the ticket with the man's name. What day is he departing? What day is he returning? Write your answers under one. So here we have basically two exercises. Under one, then you got to put depart and return. And on the second audio that we're going to play, they're going to have uh, another answer for 
that depart and that return. So you do now number one, and on the second audio, you do number two. So whatever you listen in this one, you put in number one, depart and return. Listen. Thank you for calling Century Travel. My name is Diana. How can I help you? Yeah, hi. Um, I booked a trip with Century Travel online, but I want to make a change. Okay. What's your last name, please? It's Lopez. L-O-P-E-Z. Okay, thanks. And your first name? Pedro. P-E-D-R-O. Okay, thanks, Mr. Lopez. Now, let's see. You're going from Vancouver, Canada to Mexico City. That's right. You depart on July 28th. Yes. Then you return to Vancouver on August 24th. Yes, that's right. All right, so with that audio, you're supposed to complete it. Number one, depart according to what you listen that they say in the return. What would be the date of the depart? What would be the date of the return? Now, you are going to listen for number and days. The main changes is travel dates. Listen and write the new dates on there too. So here on two, you're going to put what is the new depart day and what is the new return day. So now this listening is going to be for the answers in number two. Listen and complete number two depart and number two return. Now, let's see. You're going from Vancouver, Canada to Mexico City. That's right. You depart on July 28th. Yes. Then you return to Vancouver on August 24th. Yes, that's right. But I want to change the dates. Is that okay? Um, let's see. Yes, with your ticket, that's fine, Mr. Lopez. What are your new dates? I want to leave Vancouver on July 30th. Okay. Also, I want to change the return date to September 1st. Sure, but if you return to Vancouver after September 2nd, fares go down. Really? Yes. Right now, your fare is $621. After September 2nd, it's $578. Oh, okay. Then let's change the return date to September 3rd. All right, so after you listen, make sure that you complete in number two on the second audio, what is the new depart date and what is the new return date? On E says, look at the travel dates in the answer these questions with a partner. Are these good days to travel in your country? So according to the dates that you listen in um, the listening, are they good dates in your country to travel? And what are the best months for traveling in your country? So depending of your country, you might have a different answer. And yes, this picture is from Vancouver. Very nice. Let's go to the next section. The next section will be the speaking part. On the speaking part, you'll always listen. So like that, you can get the pronunciation and we'll complete this speaking and practice this speaking in the classroom. Now, from this speaking, after you listen, you have two questions. What holiday is on the first Monday in September in the United States? And what do people do on this day? Does Tanja know about it according to this conversation? Listen and answer those questions and practice a little more. So like that, we can practice in the class. So, Kendrick, do you have plans for Labor Day? Labor Day? Yeah, it's a holiday here in the U.S. We have the day off from school. Really? When is it? It's on the first Monday in September. Sounds good. 
So do people do anything special? I'm not sure. It's a long weekend, so some people travel. My host family plans to have a barbecue. All right, make sure that you listen again if you have to, so you can get that pronunciation. You can always repeat it. On B, it says practice the conversation in with a partner. We are going to do that in the class. C, answer the questions with a partner. Use useful expressions to help you. All right, so useful expressions are the ones that we have here. Certain, not sure, don't know. So is tomorrow holiday? The idea is that you could practice this. And like that, in the class, you'll be able to complete those things with no problem. The answer to that is yes, it is. No, it isn't. I am not sure. It could be. I don't. I don't know or I don't really know. When is Labor Day? It's on September 3rd this year. I'm not sure. Is it in September? Or I don't know or I don't really know. And speaking tips, follow-up questions. I am not sure. It is in September. I don't know. What do you think? When is Labor Day in your country, if they have a Labor Day? And you practice these questions with your partner. Investigate so like that you can answer these questions and make sure that you have it correct. When is Mexico's Independence Day? May 5th, August 24th, September 16th. Investigate. Number two, what is the new year called? Hawkmanai. Where? In Russia? in Scotland or in Iceland. Where does children day happen on May 5th? What country will that be? In Italy and Greece, in Chile and Peru, or in Korea and Japan? What holiday is on October 31st in the United States? Halloween, Thanksgiving, or Christmas? Let us know. And when we get to the class, you should have these answers. On the next section, we have the grammar. On the grammar, it says here, prepositions of time in and on. So this is when we use in and on. So like that, we could talk about the time, but we could uh, specify the time. The first thing that we're gonna do is that, make sure that you um, check as homework, what are prepositions of time, and when do we use in, when do we use on. That homework, you could do it in your notebook. And now we're gonna play the video, and after the video, we read the rest of the things that we have here so you can get this grammar. Watch this video. Prepositions of time in and on. Use the preposition in with a month, year, or season. I was born in August. I was born in 1994. I was born in the summer. Use the preposition on with a specific date or day. I was born on August 27, 1996. I was born on the 27th of August. I was born on Tuesday the 27th. Make sure that you listen again if you have to, just in case. So preposition of time, in and on. When is the holiday party? When is asking you for the day. It's on December 20th. It's on Christmas Eve. It's on Monday. So when it's a specific, you use on. Or it's in December. When it's not a specific, you know, December has more than one day. Basically, when it's like a group that you're talking about, then you use in. It's in December. It's in the winter. The winter is like three or four months, depending on the country. So it's more than one options in there, like it's like a group. Or it's in 2016. 2016, 2017, 2020 has 12 months. So it's in a group of months. This is in a group of months too. And this is in a group of days. So when it's not exact, then you use in as part of a group. He says here, study the grammar chart, then follow the steps. Student A, and we're going to do that together in the class, and make sure that you practice so you could be ready. 
Read the items in group one out loud to student B. Write the answer student B gives. And student B, you close your book and listen to your partner. Say the correct preposition for each item. Answer as quickly as you can. The idea here is that you can practice them in and on when you have to put them. Switch roles and repeat with the items in group two. So spring, summer, fall, autumn, winter. Group one, 2002, the third Tuesday of the month, March, New Year's Day, the spring, January 1st, the 80s. Group two, May, December 31st, the first Saturday of the month, the 90s, 2004, the summer Labor Day. So here, you need to put what goes in here. If it goes in or on, in 2002, on 2002, according to the information that we have here in the grammar section. So get this part and complete with in or with on. On the next section, it says, complete as much information as you can about your own birthday. Hey, this is personal. Date, the 17th, month, the year, all right? Each one you put number one, you're gonna put the date of your birthday, the month of your birthday, the year of your birthday, decade of your birthday, season where you had your birthday, day of the week where you had your birthday, and time of the day that you had your birthday. So you complete all this information personally about you. And then we're gonna practice in the class this that we have here, morning, afternoon, or evening. Interview a partner about his or her birthday. Are you similar in any way? Were you born on the same date? Were you born on the same day? Were you born at the same time? Were you born the same um, number of day? What is the month of your birth? I was born in November, and I will tell you in the class when I was born, the day and the date. So practice so you could get ready like that. We could ask those questions in the class. On the next section, we have the communication section. In the communication, we should talk about special days, all right, and holidays, which I think everybody gets happy whenever we're talking about days and holidays. He says here, on some holidays or special days, there are expressions people say. Look at the example in the box, then do the following. What holidays or special days are in the photos below? Tell a partner. So you gotta look at the photo and you gotta tell us what are the names of those holidays. And match an expression in the box with a photo. Write the letter of the expression on the photo. So these expressions, you need to connect them to the pictures that we have according to what they mean or when you use them. Take turns with a partner saying the expressions in English for each holiday or a special day. In your country, what do people say on these days? Tell your partner. All right, so normally we have fears, so you could get the pronunciation. Happy birthday! So what picture would be the one that you use for happy birthday, the ones that we have here? You know, I think you know. All right, on the second second, it says, congratulations. If you don't know it, then you investigate what does congratulations mean. So what picture of these pictures we have here, we would say congratulations. Happy New Year. Hey, and everybody's happy. Happy New Year. Which one of this picture is the one that we use to say Happy New Year? Mm. Happy Mother's Day. Which one of these pictures is the one that we use and we say, Happy Mother's Day, and practice it. I love you, Happy Valentine's Day. Hey, that might be for your boyfriend or girlfriend or the person that you are with. So which picture that we have here is the one that we normally use for that day? Hmm. If you didn't really understand it, make sure that you repeat it again. So like that, you can practice it understand it and complete your answers. Answer the questions.